If I wanted to ruin my chances at succeeding with Amazon, I would look for a product in a well-known category with less than 75 reviews that sells $5,000 to $10,000 per month, the price of $15 to $50. It would be important for me to see that there are a bunch of other products that look just like mine. Product doesn't matter much as long as it meets some arbitrary criteria set up by an agreed upon community of sellers that we don't know how many of them are actually selling on Amazon. Um, I would then open up a product research software. Seeing the revenue of a product is the only thing that matters if I was trying to ruin my chances at succeeding. And I would look for products that don't seem like they need any improvement whatsoever. I would mainly just try and find something that I can order, put in a brown box with no branding, source from a supplier whom I may never reach out to again, just because I want to test the water. It would also be very important that throughout this process, I was constantly reminding myself that this wasn't my real attempt. This was just to test it and see if I can get familiar with it and get used to the user interface and get used to the process because I just want to start. And I would also constantly remind myself that I don't really need to try that hard since after all, it is just a test and I just want to familiarize myself with how the business model works. Instead of thinking through who my customer is and why they would want to buy from me specifically, I would likely just look at a seller who was making a lot of money, like $15,000 per month with 44 reviews and say, look, they're doing it. I can probably do it too. I'll just do the same exact thing that they're doing and I'll just put my logo on it instead. But because we're just testing the waters, when it comes to product photography, I'll likely just resort to paying a freelancer roughly 100 to $150 for some very poor quality Photoshop um, with shadows that make no sense. And I'll pay no real attention to how perspective works because after all, if the customer gets something and has buyer's remorse, it's not my problem, it's just a test listing. I'd then head over to a website like Alibaba where I can find the product that I'm looking for um, that is the exact same product that everyone else is sourcing because I just don't have the time and energy to think through a actual value add in this marketplace. I simply just want to do the same thing as everyone else and inevitably compete on price. Um, but I will convince myself for some reason that just because I'm doing it, it's gonna be different. And then I'll actually be able to sell for a premium price with the same product, just because maybe I bundled 10 more in it. So instead of 100, I have 110 or 150. Um, and that's really gonna set me apart from the competition. I'm gonna use a copy and paste template to reach out to about 10 suppliers. And then whoever gives me the best price, I'm gonna order from them almost immediately with no real communication about what it is that needs to be done in the follow-up. I probably won't get a shipping quote until it's time to actually ship the product. And I likely won't order a sample, but if I do, I'll look at it for a couple of seconds and go, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. It looks like what I see on Amazon. I won't actually test it or compare it to the others and order a bunch of my competitors' products and see how it stands up to them. And then for my marketing strategy and Amazon PPC strategy, I would likely just make a handful of campaigns, most likely phrase match, and dump anywhere from 50 to 100 of the most searched keywords into all of those campaigns. I would potentially run some auto um, at $10 a day, maybe a few of those thrown in there. Um, and I would likely set the bid slightly above suggested, maybe three or 5% so that I'm really gonna outsmart my competitors by going with a high bid for the most searched things right off the bat. I then would completely disregard the idea of getting brand registered, trademarking my brand name, um, setting up social media accounts, or doing any type of email marketing or lead squeeze whatsoever, I would likely just completely rely on Amazon and trying to outsell and beat the competition through slightly modified offers that are all really the same thing with different pricing. After about three days of entering the market and seeing my PPC clicks keep rising, with no sales coming in, I would likely begin to worry and I would start to shut off every campaign that I just turned on. I would dramatically start messing around with everything that we just set up to make sure that I don't have any form of stability in my data to see what the effects of any changes that I'm making are. After a few weeks to a month, I would go, well, 
Good thing I really didn't try here and I just made this test listing because the product was a dud after all. And then I would focus on another product. I'd go, well, it works for some people, so it must work. So I'm gonna go test another product. Let me try and find a, another product that sells five to $15,000 per month where I can go source the same exact thing for relatively cheap, make a little test listing to see how the market does and go try selling that. After about three to five failed attempts doing that, I would start to think, okay, maybe I do need to really learn how to do this. So I would then go buy the first high priced program or course that I could find teaching this, thinking that as soon as I enter that door, I'm gonna be changed as an entrepreneur completely. And I'll instantly be able to execute on my potential. I would go through approximately 30% of that program before I get bored and stop. And I would make some slight changes to the way that I approach things, but overall I'm gonna keep thinking and acting the same way, never really seeing myself or the way I'm doing things as the problem. Instead, I'm gonna look at the circumstances and the luck element as the problem. And when that's all said and done and a year goes by and I decide this probably isn't for me, but I'm an entrepreneur so I'll figure something else out to do, I'll get shiny object syndrome and I'll go try Shopify dropshipping and I'll put that same half-assed effort into the next thing until that starts to get painful. And then I'll go, oh, that doesn't work either. And I'll just keep spinning and spinning and spinning from opportunity to opportunity never really giving it my all and testing a whole bunch of stuff to see what sticks. 